G'day, you play dickheads, Vaping Bogan, back again for another Dinky Die review. Hope you're all having a fucking perler. Got a bit of a perler here from Purge Dickheads, another side fire mech. It's called the Catalyst, and it's got a very shimmery, shiny sort of finish to it with this uh, beautiful engraved pattern. Side fire, as I mentioned, a nice little fucking bar situation. Atop it, I have the Asgard. A bit of red and gold always goes quite nicely, I reckon. And the drip tip is from District 5. I think it's called their One Drip Tips. They've been out for uh, a few years now, but always looks nice with a bit of gold, or should I say, brass action. So another side fire mech dickheads and another hefty one. It's becoming a bit of a theme this week. I've got the usual 0.1 ohm aliens in the Asgard here. Let's take it for a little fucking rip. Hitting like your alcoholic stepdad. Very, very nice performance off this one, along with the usual beautiful craftsmanship from Purge. We're gonna go through all the ins and outs very fucking soon. But before we can do that, as always, let's crack a fucking beer. Got a nice big hazy Citra double IPA today from Modern Times Beer. This is called Alien Radio. Interesting fucking name there. On the back she reads, this outrageously tasty double IPA is a haze filled festival of Citra. Idaho Seven Crystal and Simcoe Hops. Ready your face for a glorious detonation of stone fruit and tropical awesomeness with undertones of resinous pine that bring the whole thing together in a rather spectacular fashion. If you're into extremely tasty beers, we wouldn't hesitate to recommend this little number right here. Well, I'm certainly into tasty beers. I don't know who isn't, but uh, we're gonna see if this one lives up to its fucking label. 35 IBU and coming in at a fairly hefty eight fucking percent. A, B, V. But let's just see how she fucking tastes. Let's drink a beer. Let's drink it here. Cause tonight is all that's here. To the bitter end, dickheads. Looking fucking hazy to me. Smelling fruity and tropical. Fucking cheers. That is a fucking well done hazy double IPA. Well balanced between the thick, juicy, tropical mouthfeel that they talk about and that uh, piney, real IPA kind of flavor. The balance of fruitiness and tropical sort of vibes with uh, a real IPA kind of uh, bite to it is very well done. That is uh, very nice. As I said on the can, the stone fruit is very noticeable, getting sort of a peach, nectarine kind of vibes from this one along with that real nice sort of uh, piney flavor and a slightly sort of sweet malt base to it. That is a very, very good hazy double IPA. Can't taste any of that 8% booze in there either, being hidden nicely by a very sort of lush, thick, juicy stone fruit kind of uh, middle. Yeah, that is just going down a fucking treat. Let's pair her up with a fucking liquid. Busted out a new one I hadn't tried from the Punk Juice line I've been working my way through. This one is called Scum. Thankfully it doesn't taste anything like the shit between your toes. A uh, fizzy cherry cola we've got here and it's pretty fucking nice. Quite different to uh, my own Kurong Cola from Bogan Brews. A real sort of candy cherry cola, sort of sweet and, uh, and lolly like but it's got a real cooling kind of uh, feel to it as well. Quite chilly. Let's see how it goes with this fucking stone fruit beer. That is going fucking well. Yeah, the cola generally goes nicely with an IPA. The citrusy flavors, the piney flavors of uh, IPAs go pretty fucking nicely with the cola. And the cherry is uh, going very nicely with that sort of stone fruit. The sweetness from this liquid, as well as the uh, cola and cherries, all going very nicely together. Yeah, that sweet candy cola is going bloody well with this uh, stone fruit and that pininess from the beer. I'm liking that a lot, dickheads. But enough about the fucking beer. Let's get down at the up and fucking close. Have a good squiz at this uh, Catalyst mod, and then we'll talk pros, cons, prices, and all the other shit. Let's have a sticky beak. We will find the mod, an Allen key, and a booklet of authenticity. But let's have a closer look. So isn't she fucking pretty? Look at the shimmery engravings. Very, very fucking flashy, this one, I reckon. Very nice. I've certainly been uh, enjoying not only the look of it, but it feels really nice in the hand. All of those uh, sort of larger divots kind of mold nicely. 
between your fingers and then the uh, the finer engravings in each of those divots give it a really nice texture and as you can see when you sort of turn it in the light it's almost got a fucking disco ball type effect to it. Reminds me a little bit of one of those old school sort of brass lighters my dad used to have in his box of goodies. I used to dig through his gadget box. It's got a, a kind of like 80 sort of lighter look to it. Very, very fucking cool. So I've got the brass version here. It does come in one other finish, an aluminium body with a brass firing bar and brass top cap. So same as this one, just with an aluminium body. So it's a hefty fucker. You've got a 30 millimeter platform up the top here. Just gave that a bit of a clean up. Had a few fingerprints on there already. It's a very shiny, polished 510 platform. 30 millimeters is what it tapers to. It's a 31 millimeter total diameter so a fairly girthy fucking mod you've got four large allen key screws securing the top plate and firing bar to the body but that really is about it you've then got the battery cap but it's very simple in the way that this thing works so you're giving the fire bar a squeeze to complete the circuit that makes connection with the cup down the bottom here it's an insulated delrin cap so you unscrew that and the threads are all really nicely done sometimes with delrin threaded into metal it can get a little bit tight and a bit sticky but these are really really well done very very easy to uh, get off so you unscrew that cup you've got plenty of threads there so depending on your battery length your 510 length you got heaps of adjustment there i haven't had any battery rattle or anything like that a big chunky copper contact in the base there, and that is essentially what your firing bar slams into. So as you press down, you can see that bar in there makes contact with your big copper piece here, which is obviously making constant contact with your battery. So very, very simple. There's really just the bar, the body, and then the battery cap, uh, three bits to this mod, not a whole lot of uh, pieces which is really nice and simple for maintenance but every bit as always with purge is so precisely machined we're getting close here and have a look at some of these engravings very very nicely done the, the texture they've got on each of these divots and the symmetry on the sort of pattern it's almost like a beehive kind of twisted honeycomb kind of uh, look to it. It just looks beautiful as you turn it and the light bounces off the different edges. You got purge engraved down the bar. You do have a serial number down at the bottom here. I've got number 284. It is a simple mod, but we will just take it apart so you can see the rest of it. So you just loosen off these four grub screws. <laughs> And then you just slide away the top plate. That's attached to the firing bar. And that's it. It is very, very simple. Beautifully machined. The tube in there is nice and smooth. It is 21700 battery compatible, dickhead. Sorry if I didn't uh, mention that earlier. There's your top plate. There's your fire bar. A nice concave shape to the connection point. So it's going to make really solid contact with the copper cap there, increasing the transfer of voltage and the overall performance of the mod. But there's really nothing else to fucking show you on this one, so let's quickly whip it back together. And that is it. Job fucking done. Very, very simple for cleaning and maintenance. That's what she looks like with the 30 millimeter Asgard, the full size Asgard. There's your 25 millimeter Asgard. Doesn't look too bad. Just a bit of a, a step down kind of thing, but a little bit like a, you know, a fat guy with a small head. I think it looks nicer with your 28 and your 30 mil toppers. But there you go, cunts. That's about it for the Purge Catalyst. Let's jump back up top, talk pros, cons, prices, and everything fucking else.
Oh, there it is, dickheads. The fucking catalyst. And uh, certainly a catalyst for the release of dopamine. Feel good when I look at this thing. It is such a beautiful piece of fucking vape art, if you will. But let's get into the pros and bloody cons. What do we like? What do we fucking dislike? Well, as I've already alluded, the beautiful engravings that uh, have been done to this piece of brass are a huge fucking pro -ski. It shimmers, it shines, it's just sick as tits, as he would say. <laughs> Really love the engravings on this thing. The two layered sort of uh, engraving is so well done. You've got the larger sort of honeycomb cut and then you've got the finer pattern that has been engraved into those cuts and it just gives it uh, a real fucking elegance and, uh, and classiness that you don't see on a lot of fucking mech mods. So very, very well machined. The build quality overall is stunning. The threads are fucking perfect. The uh, engravings, just stunning. Very, very simple in the way that it's been designed is a huge pro ski. I love that it's just really three pieces. There's not much to this thing. Very easy for cleaning and maintenance. I also love the way that the fire bar, the tension feels on that bar. Uh, sometimes you can get uh, bar fire systems that are a little bit too stiff. Sometimes they're in the wrong position, but this thing doesn't really matter. You just grab it with your palm and you just sort of squeeze and it's just so effortless to fire it. And performance has got to be a huge fucking pro with this one. As hard hitting as some of the best mods that I've had, things like the Nitro V2, as hard hitting as the Hydra we had the other day, really, really low voltage drop. The simplistic design, I think, has a lot to do with that. The fact that they have uh, contoured the shape of the fire bar contact so that it really has uh, a large surface area with the uh, the copper cup in the bottom. So about as good as it fucking gets from a 21700 single battery mod. Really, really like using this thing. Also really love the, uh, the fire bar. It's got a great tension to it. I like how long it is and it's reasonably thin and that gives it a nice spring to it. It also means that I don't have to think about where I press on this bar. I kind of just wrap my hand around it and just squeeze together my fist and it just fires beautifully. For those that like big atomizers, the large 30 millimeter platform is gonna be a fucking pro ski. It looks great with things like the Asgard. I was running my Trilogy RTA on it before this. So anything 28 and up is gonna look really fucking nice on here. If you're into your bigger fucking toppers, then uh, certainly a nice fucking platform. It's very comfortable in the hand as well. The texture of the engravings, the contours of those deeper cuts just feels really nice in the hand. It's the kind of thing you can sit there and, and almost fidget with. You can kind of just spin it run your fingers over that uh, honeycomb sort of pattern. It's just a nice fucking mod to hold in the hand. It also doesn't feel like it slips or anything like that because of those uh, engravings. So looks, performance and feel are all top bloody notch. What could I possibly complain about with this one? Not a hell of a lot, really. I, I don't have much that I personally don't like about this thing. It is a fairly big mod, uh, being 30 millimeters or 31 millimeters. It's got a bit of weight to it. It's not as heavy as say the Hydra, which we reviewed just recently or some other mods that I've had, but uh, that's about all I could really say. It's kind of heavy uh, and it takes 30 mil addy, so your 25s, your 24s don't look so great on such a large top. The only thing I could really say if I was scrounging for something to whinge about is it's relatively easy to fire, which is something I like about the mod, but also it doesn't have a locking feature. So if you whack it in your pocket and you lean up against something, it's pretty easy to set her off. It would have been nice if there was maybe a, a locking feature in the bottom here with the, the cup design. They have done that before, but that's about all I could really say. There's no real cons here or, or certainly no deal breakers. So price, what are you looking at for one of these shiny puppies? Well, as with Purge, they are made in America, so that always comes with a fairly hefty price tag. And obviously the Purge name uh, generally has a fair fucking uh, price tag attached. You're looking at 395 American schmackaroos, which is certainly gonna be out of a lot of people's budget. But if you like Purge stuff and you like finer fucking mods, it's certainly not outlandish. There are more expensive mods out there, would you believe it? <laughs> but is it going to perform better than something much cheaper? 
Probably not. Is it gonna be better finished? Most likely. It is fucking very, very well machined. The build quality is there, and this one certainly has a lot more fucking machining and uh, effort put into the finish. So yeah, you can't make up your mind whether it's worth your fucking dosh. But that's all I really got for you, dickheads. A beautiful fucking mod, a hard hitting fucking mod. So I'm gonna get the hell out of here. I'll leave you with the usual Instagram and Facebook links down in the description if you want to see what this fucking Muppet gets up to outside of the YouTube videos. If you want to support my channel, please do. Hit the like, hit the subscribe button. They always fucking help me out. But if you want to really keep me behind the lens, then hit some of my support links. As I say, every video. I run an independent channel, which means I don't get paid to make these reviews. I don't take any sponsorships from vape companies. There's no sneaky jumping the queue fees or any crap like that. I want to make sure you're getting a truly unbiased opinion on the products I review. But to keep that up, a bit of public support is how I pay the bills. So hit my Patreon page, there's special content vlogs there each week, as well as our little Patreon community via the Facebook group and Zoom room. You can hang out with myself and have a fucking beer, and those cunts keep me doing my thing, so fucking cheers. But if you can't, that's all good. Sit back, sub me fucking dicks off, all your bloody tits off. It doesn't matter whether it's shiny brass and costs nearly $400, or it's made of plastic and it costs 40 bucks. As long as you're not banging the bloody bungers, that's all that matters. Cheers for tuning in, cheery fucking oh.